Hey guys, it's me Gun, and I just woke up from a nap. You know one of those naps where like you accidentally fall asleep but you fall asleep with like your makeup on and the sleep is so good because you aren't like expecting to take a nap, like you just magically fell asleep. But then you wake up like feeling really greasy and like gross because you fell asleep with your makeup on and just kind of spend some time like reconsidering your life choices. Yeah, I just had one of those naps. And then I kind of woke up like, I really feel like fulfilling some promises I've made. Yeah, I'm not really sure why, but like, I just remembered that I promised to make this video a really long time and it keeps getting requested. And like, I feel so bad that I haven't done it because basically, listen to this. So I started my new college at the start of April. And before that, I spent like two weeks doing my absolute best to make as many videos as humanly possible. So that while I'm at college, I'm actually able to put out videos without having to make them because I knew that I wouldn't have a lot of free time and then like on the last day of that I was supposed to make this video and I can't remember what happened but I just remembered it didn't work out and like I ended up not having the time for it and then I started college and ever since I started college I've only been editing videos I haven't been filming any so this video kind of ended up being like put to the side but I've actually been really like itching to make videos I don't know like I miss being in front of the camera but like I don't know why it was this weird time because this is like I just had a nap do you know what I mean so like my tongue isn't moving the way I would like for it to like I'm mispronouncing words a lot right now so that's the state we're in but yeah I'm gonna be talking about my time at a Japanese language school and which school I went to and if I would recommend it and all that good stuff so let's get into it I'm gonna start this right off by saying that I came to Japan with the help of an organization called Gogo Go Nihon this is not sponsored by them I'm not making money right now but please sponsor me again. Basically what I'm trying to say is like, don't ask me questions, because I get questions in my DM all the time. Like, people giving me really specific situations they're in and being like, so can I come to Japan? Or like, so how can I come to Japan? Or like, so what would you recommend for me? And I'm kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, I basically don't know anything. I might make a separate video with just like different ways that I know that people have moved to Japan. Basically what I'm trying to say is I know things super generally, but if you want like actual advice, then you should probably go to someone who knows things like professionally, like someone who does this for a living. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna sneeze. I didn't sneeze. What was I saying? Oh yeah, don't come to me for advice, go to them for advice. I'm gonna link it below. On their website, you can find a lot of different things. Like you can find estimates for prices for like different living situations. Like if you wanna live in a share house, or if you wanna live in a dorm, or if you wanna live in an apartment, like they have those things on their website. I believe at least they did when I was using it. And they also have like their schools listed on that and they have the prices for like one term or like for a year and things like that. So for prices, for like really specific details, for visa information, go to them, I'm gonna link it below because I don't know that much. This video is mostly just going to be talking about my personal experience and my personal opinions and revealing my language school which everyone wants to know for some reason. So I'm going to reveal that the language school I went to is... That was really good. Shinjuku Japanese Language Institute in Takadanabawa or Shinjuku Nihongo Gakko or SNG for short. Dun, 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 dun. I actually did like studying in Takadanababa because it's kind of like a student town so they had a lot of like cheap things. Literally right across from my school was this really amazing Vietnamese food place which my Vietnamese friend recommended to me so that's how you know it's good. Like if someone from that country recommends the restaurant that's how you know like you found a good one. And it was so cheap and so delicious. So like if you go to SNG in Takadanababa like cross the road, go to that Vietnamese place. It's incredible. So basically before I actually came to Japan I did study Japanese for a full year and they didn't teach me anything. Like when I came to Japan I learned more in the first three months of studying at SNG than I did for the whole year of studying in the UK. Like I don't even know what we were doing for that year. I think we spent like a whole year learning like 100 kanji. I remember when I first arrived in Japan, it genuinely felt like I had never studied Japanese in my whole life. Because not only did I barely learn anything when I did study for a year, but also it had been like two years since I had studied. So like, it was all gone. I was basically starting from zero. Like, not really, but basically. So I started off with the slow course. Now, SNG has like 
a fast course and a slow course and people who were in the fast course would really like hype it up like oh yeah it's so difficult but then when I moved to the fast course like it's whatever it's not that bad like it's three hours of lessons a day like what could actually be that bad don't get me wrong it was actually a lot more difficult like you definitely have to put in more work but like it's not like impossible so like if you're someone who wants to learn Japanese faster but you're like nervous like oh my gosh can I survive in the fast course you can it's fine I think I almost did fail Chukyuichi though but I didn't, so here we are. So I actually started with the new mon class, which is before Shokyu. I remember the first lesson, we were literally doing asa, hiru, ban, yoru, which literally means morning, midday, evening, night. That was our first lesson. I remember new mon being very slow and I already had studied those things, but at the same time, I think that was the best time for me at my language school. I think mostly because of the class, because the thing about the classes are, um, they change every three months and people can join at any level. So you can join the school. Oh, this is an important point. When you join the school, they give you like a little test to see what level you're at. So people of all levels can join the school. You can start right at advanced or you can start right from the beginning. It literally makes no difference because every three months you move up a level. And so they choose which level you're going to be placed at based on your ability. But since Newmont is the absolute like zero level like you literally can't have studied anything else before Everyone in the class has just moved to Japan So because of that everyone's like really eager to make friends and like really lonely. I was lonely I was very lonely. But everyone was so nice and we all just got along really well Like we all did things together and I feel like that's the tightest that I've ever been with like my classmates like everyone was really tight I still keep in touch with a lot of them and also the teachers were amazing if nothing else I recommend SNG for the beginners teachers they are incredible I had Osaki sensei and Donosaki sensei and um, Donosaki sensei of course she's so sweet and she's kind of like a big sister figure your teachers change with each level but like I had those two teachers on and off for the first nine months or so and over time we developed all these like inside jokes and so Donosaki sensei is someone that we had a lot of inside jokes with and she was really sweet but Osaki sensei is a whole nother level of teacher you know someone who like they obviously someone out there is having a great time you know when someone really loves their job and you can tell and they have passion for it that was Osaki sensei she really obviously loves people but she became like an aunt to me and I remember like when I was filling in my college application she was the person I was going to for help and stuff because she previously worked in Waseda like recruiting the foreigners recruiting um what's the name of the thing Accepting? I don't know. Anyway, she was the one who looked through the forms of like foreign applicants So she kind of knew what was up. She was like someone who would go out the extra mile to help you and she would Always make the lesson so interesting and so much fun and I would really look forward to my lessons with her She was fantastic hands down the best teacher I've ever had in my whole life And I feel like I will always say that there was just something so special about her I feel like this video could be retitled like why I love Osaki sensei. So if you are starting from beginner I recommend going to SNG because Osaki sensei's teaching is no joke You pick it up like that and you do it while having fun like like honestly I'm not being paid to say this like she she's just fantastic I have like a list of things that I have to talk about and I ended up speaking about Osaki sensei for like 20 minutes But yeah to just kind of go into the class system again Basically what happens is every three months you get to take an exam on what you learned for the past three months And if you pass the exam you get to move on to the next level and it kind of just keeps going like that until you finish If you fail a level you have to redo the same level again I never failed a level but like it definitely does get really difficult when you start with the intermediate But like it's not like impossible like again it's three hours of lessons a day They have morning and afternoon lessons so you can start from nine o'clock and finish one o'clock Which oh my god isn't that just the most amazing thing like you start at nine and finish at one like what was I even doing with all my free time like I can't even remember I, I remember being really busy I worked a lot more than I do now but there was no better feeling in the whole entire world than finishing at one o'clock and being able to just do whatever you wanted that's amazing like I miss that feeling so much I don't have that feeling anymore or you can do I think it was something like 1 30 to 4 30 2.30 to 5.30? I don't remember. It was like an afternoon class. And me personally, I'm not a morning person, so if I have an afternoon class, I end up sleeping throughout the morning and then taking the afternoon class and then just going back home. So that kind of sucked in that sense because it was kind of lame, like, finishing school when it was dark and, like, you didn't really do anything with your day. So I didn't really like that as much. But one thing I really did like about it is the train is beautiful. 
calm. There's no one on it. The morning train in Japan is disgusting. It's disgusting. You're literally like crammed up against all these people and like they're farting and coughing and ugh, it's just the worst. It's the worst part of my day. You know what I love? I love a rainy day with a quiet train. And you can get that if you take the afternoon class, but you cannot get that if you take the morning class. I would still take the morning class over the afternoon class though, because like, I don't know, I just, I like being more productive with my day than just sleeping. So let's have a look through the textbooks. Now I'm just going to be using the Chukyu Ni textbook, which is Intermediate 2. What have I got in here? Oh my god, what a throwback. So I'm kind of having a look through this, and I want to talk about how we actually learnt things. So with the beginner classes you learn like basic conversational day-to-day -day things that you're going to be using the most in Japan, and just like basic kanji and things like that and then as you level up you start to learn more like weird things like I remember we had this whole section on fermented foods which was so weird I actually get really irritated thinking about it because I literally never talk to anyone about fermented food ever in any language like who talks about fermented food and now I know the word for like fermentation but like when am I gonna use it I mean I'm guessing it's something to do with like the JLPT and I guess it comes up in the JLPT or something but I was just there the whole time like I do not want to talk about cheese and natto actually I don't mind talking about cheese my point is you start to learn some pretty weird things so the way we kind of learn in the higher levels is oh my gosh I haven't looked through this in so long it's so like nostalgic I mean, it's only been three months since I stopped being in language school, but it feels like forever. Okay, let's use this as an example. They'll give you like a big old paragraph like this about something. And this here was about the like extinct, not extinct, but endangered animals in Okinawa, which is such a weird thing to talk about, but like that's what it was about. And um, as you learn these texts, you kind of learn kanji that's relevant to this text along with it. So you kind of end up with a mix of kanji of like different levels. At this point the kanji was like N2 but there were some like different ones depending on the topic. And we studied kanji separately with this kanji book. So while we were learning this text about the Yambaru Kuina, which is like an endangered bird in Okinawa, we were also learning things like the kanji for, let's have a look, for Osore, because I feel like they were talking about like there's a fear of extinction and things like that. I mean this is like one page of what we were learning and then there's like several more pages for each section and you can see which N level they are. So it's mostly N2 and then there were some N3s and N4s mixed in. So obviously for example Chiki was a really relevant word for this because it was talking about like which areas it lived in. Do you know what I mean? Like they would mix this kanji into the text so that you actually had an example of how to use it. Also can we just talk about how the Japanese word for like area is cheeky and it makes me want to talk about like cheeky nandos and shit like that. It's so stupid but like that's a me. So that was kind of how the curriculum worked and then alongside that we would then we would then also be given like separate hyogen. Is it hyogen? I don't know, I can't remember if it was Bumbu Hyogen, but basically like sayings or like ways to say things and um, we would kind of study them and like we make our own little sentences and like kind of just go through them for a while. It was literally just like pages and pages of these kinds of things, like the whole book is full of them. So one thing I will say about language school is you learn these things really quickly and you learn them for exams but they leave your head really fast after because you learn the language so fast like I got to like N2 level, which I'll get to that in a second, in like a year and a half and obviously that's really fast but also like I was learning it just to pass the N2 level, do you know what I mean? So while I didn't actually take the JLPT, a lot of people at the same level as me who studied the same amount as me did take the N2 and did pass it and I did pass my school's exam which was quoted to be N2 level because a lot of people really don't believe that you can get to the N2 level but honestly you guys you are overestimating the N2 because you only have to get half points to pass the N2 and I remember before we'd even finished studying all the N2 things we did like an N2 practice exam like just for fun and I literally went into it like not even thinking about it I didn't study it for it at all and I almost passed like we hadn't even studied N2 properly and I almost passed because you only have to get like half 
points. Like, I think I was like a few points off passing without even having finished studying N2. So if your aim is to pass the N2 or something like that, 100% you can do that in like a year and a half of language school, no problem. So yeah, that's how we practice reading and that's how we practice kanji and then that's how we practice like learning new phrases and stuff. Then another thing they would do is every morning they would say these sentences to us and we would have to write them as quickly as we could in hiragana. And I think that was mostly to kind of practice our listening comprehension and like our hiragana writing abilities and kind of keep us up to speed. But then we did do like actual listening exams which were in the same style as the N2, like two people talking about something or like in a situation. And then they give you like four different possible answers that it could be like, what were they talking about? A, this, B, this, you know what I mean? And then one thing I will say is like, even though we mostly only study to pass the JLPTs, we do also learn speaking because I remember I was speaking to Emma from Toki Doki Traveler and she told me that the school that she went to, they didn't learn any speaking, like they didn't practice speaking, which is so insane to me because we would practice speaking like every lesson. I mean, first of all, we would practice speaking through debate and like the teacher asking us questions and things like that. Or also like while we're learning one of these phrases, she would go through like each person and we would have to say like our own sentence with the new phrase we just learned. Then on top of that, once a week they would give us a theme and with that theme we had to make a one minute speech. And then when we moved on to Jokyu, which is like advanced, we had to make it a three minute speech. <laughs> but it made the one minute speech look like a piece of cake because after a while, like I could just make these like on the spot. Like at first I used to plan them and be like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna say? Then after a while I just got to this point where I would just consider like, what am I gonna say? And then like that was it. Like I would just go into it and be like, hey guys, so um, like not planning it at all. And I think that was kind of the point. Like the point was for us to be able to like talk about things for a longer period of time, I guess. And then we would also have speaking exams as part of our like end of three month exam. Usually kind of like interview exams, but I remember we had one exam where we had to like give them advice. Like they would be like, if I visit your country, what advice would you give me? And I'd be like, don't fall asleep on the train because you're gonna get fucking robbed. Okay, so let's get to the T, which is Oh my gosh, my whole building just like made a sound. Um, let's get to the T, which is would I recommend Shinjuku Nihongo Gakko for people who want to study in Japan? And I say absolutely yes. I mean, I absolutely don't see a reason why not. I got so much out of it. I got to the level that I needed to get to. They taught me so much. The teachers were fantastic. I made a lot of friends. So yeah, it's great. I mean, we learned the things that we needed to learn at the time. The thing about Japanese, as an English speaker or as a European language speaker, if that makes sense, is that Japanese takes a lot of time to learn. So are you going to get absolutely fluent in Japanese going to a language school? No. I kind of see it as the ropes to get where you need to be. So while I learned enough Japanese to get into the college I wanted to, I am still struggling. Like it takes years and years for someone from a Western country to learn Japanese and even a lot of people in like other Asian countries. It's not the same as like learning Spanish or German which have a few similarities to your own language, English. I'm. I'm saying this from the perspective of an English speaker, which I'm actually not even like a native English speaker. Like I do speak like native level English, but like my first language is Swedish, but like bear with me. Like I've said before, my boyfriend's dad, he's like Japanese, but he's Brazilian Japanese. So he was born and raised in Brazil and actually didn't speak any Japanese until he actually moved to Japan. And now he's lived in Japan for like, I don't know, 40 years or something. And he still makes mistakes. Like he says Hiroko has a lot of texts that Hiroko has reads and he's like, I have no idea what my dad's trying to say. And that's by no means me trying to like Put him down. I'm just using it as an example to prove that like Japanese is like really difficult. If you do not come from Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Korea, you're gonna have a very difficult time. Japanese doesn't come like that. Like you have to really stick at it. And that's something that I really had to like learn because like I always put myself down like oh my gosh I've been learning Japanese for a year and a half and I'm still so lame at it. And it's like of course I'm still lame at it. Like it's literally Japanese. Like it's is so different from my own language. It's one of the languages that's considered the hardest to learn for native English speakers. So don't feel bad if you're like studying Japanese a lot and you're like not really getting to the level you want to be. It's okay, you have to take your time with Japanese. And I'm trying really hard to take my time with Japanese. And while I'm not the level I want to be now, I'm gonna keep working really, really hard while I'm at my college to get to the level I want to be. And so should you. So yeah, you are not going to learn fluent Japanese going to language school, but it's 
it's definitely going to help you. Also, if you kind of just want to have like a meaningful little trip, then just do like a year of the slow course and you can kind of like explore Japan and enjoy Japan and kind of take it easy and then like pick up a little bit of Japanese along the way. Why not? I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, <laughs> if you like this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos because I like it when you watch my videos. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Thank you. Bye.